In this second part of our video on returning arrays from functions in C, what we'll do is that we will look at each one of the solutions that we had identified in the previous video, and uh, we'll actually compile them and run them and uh, see how they work in code, and hopefully this will give us a better understanding of each one of the solutions. So these were six ways to return arrays from functions that we discussed at length in the previous video, and uh, now we're just going to put that in code. So first of all, before I actually look at the six solutions, I just wanted to show you how this first example wasn't working. Uh, we discussed the three things that were wrong with it, and now I'll do it again right here. So I put it in a file called invalid.c, and uh, so I just actually copied over this function. I just changed some of the names. So this is my function that's supposed to return uh, an array of characters. So it creates the array of character right here, and then it returns a pointer to it. And then this main function is uh, almost the same as this one. It uh, actually calls this function and then assigns the return value to its own uh, uh, array of characters right here that it had allocated memory for. And then it goes on and tries to print that string. So Let's try to compile that, and we see clearly that this doesn't work. First, we get a warning saying that this function returns address of a local variable, and we had discussed that in the previous video. We said that this variable is local to this function, and it's being returned, or we're attempting to return it from this function. And although this is legal, you will get undefined behavior, because uh, the next call to another function will simply overwrite that region in memory uh, in, in the stack, and so you will lose that local variable. So it's giving you a warning right here, and then we have an error here that won't even allow us to compile, uh, and this is, uh, it's saying that incompatible types in assignment line 13 so let's check that line 13 we are trying to uh, take the return value from that function which is a pointer to a character and we're trying to assign that to an array like we said we cannot assign something to an array once you define it you can't assign something to it you can start modifying its elements but you can't assign something to it and this is uh, returning a pointer to a character and this is an array so this of course won't work so for these six solutions, what I had done, let's look at the first one right here. What I did is I copied, uh, I put it, I put the caller, which is main, uh, in, in this function right here, and I just used preprocessor directives to enable and disable some parts of code. So this is the first solution, this is the second solution, this is the third solution, this is just calling these functions, and these functions are the functions that are returning arrays. So these were written, or I gave you examples in each one of the solutions previously, and uh, I actually copied them over to a file called array returning functions in C. So it's right here, array returning functions in C. So this is the first solution, string literal, and so I'm doing pretty much the same as I had done here. Instead here, I'm just creating the string and then returning it. I'm creating the string literal and then returning a pointer to it. Also, for every one of the solutions, I just copied the code I had earlier, put it here, and actually made it uh, uh, into a complete whole so we could return an array of characters. So right now we're actually dealing with arrays of characters. These examples could have equally applied to arrays of other elements, but in this case uh, we're just dealing with arrays of characters. Um, so this is my array returning functions, and I'm including them in my main file, this main function will act as the caller, like I said, the caller to these re array returning functions. And I am enabling and disabling uh, parts of this code, depending on the solution we're going to be looking at, by using these preprocessor defined. So I will define one uh, of these macros to be one, so enabled, and everything else to be disabled, zero. So only that part which is enabled will be compiled. Everything else will not be seen by the compiler. The preprocessor will just remove it. So this is just my way of making things uh, easier to look at. Uh, I could have done all of these examples in separate files, but I've just put them all in one file right here and used a preprocessor to help me. So let's look at the first solution right here. So in this one, let me look at the, uh, oh, let me just save that, so array returning functions. This is the very first one that we're going to call, the very first function that's returning an array of characters. Um, 
Uh, in this case, it's just returning a string literal, and we said this solution is the simplest solution, but it works only for strings and only simple strings, strings that are not calculated. So in this case, let's actually give it a try. So <clears throat> main right here, I'm activating that part of the code. So only this part is getting compiled. Uh, I am creating a pointer to a character, then and then getting this function to return the string literal and I am making my pointer to point to it and then I'm printing it out right here. So let's actually compile this and run it. This is a string literal so this works. So I'm just going to go over these examples one by one just to give you an idea that it actually works and then uh, I'll give you a link to this code so that you could run it on your own and hopefully learn from it. So this was the, our first solution the second one where we used a global array, so we'll look at array returning functions right here. This is the global array right here that we're defining to be of size size, and size is a macro that I have right here. It's 100, so you could change that. So this is my global array, and then this is the function that's returning, that's filling, that's uh, putting content into that global array, and then returning a pointer to it, and then my main function is going to call that uh, uh, array returning function and then uh, store the return value uh, uh, into my pointer right here. So make that pointer point to that uh, global array, which was filled by that function, and then I'm going to print out the contents of that global array. So let me just enable that part of the code and then disable this one. And so this is main, run it, and I get this string is in a global array. So this is working as well. So this is the second solution. We said the contents can now be calculated, but the problem is that um, we anyone could modify this global array. So we want to avoid global arrays in this in, in, in this case, and we also want to make sure that every time this function is called, we're not actually overriding that global array. So we're getting new buffers. This is another uh, method or another solution uh, using static arrays. So uh, this is where we are making the call to that return static array function, which is pretty much the equivalent of this function, and we'll look at it in the other file. So I'm just going to activate this part of the code right now, put everything else to zero. So I'm doing pretty much the same thing as I had done in the previous two examples. I have a pointer to a character right here, and then um, I'm expecting return static array to return a pointer to an array of characters, and then having my pointer point to it, and then I'm going to print out that uh, string or array of characters. So I'm going to just show you the, the function right here, the static array function. And uh, it's doing pretty much the same as what we had in the global array, but this time we're dealing with a, a static array. And we said the advantage of doing that was that not anyone would be able to modify this array. So it's not going to be accessible to everyone uh, as opposed to the global array case. Global array could be modified from anywhere, even from different files. Whereas in this case, it's only callers to this function that will receive a pointer to the static array and be able to modify it later on. So let's look at main right here. Now we could actually just compile and see that it works. This string is in a static array. So that worked, uh, but we're still dealing with, again, this problem of overriding that static array every time this function is called. So the caller will have to make sure that when they receive a pointer to the static array that they copy its contents to another array so that the next caller to that function doesn't overwrite the result that they got from that function. So this is still a problem. We said that we, we would have to statically allocate uh, an array. And for larger buffers, this could be really wasteful. So the next solution, we're getting slowly to the best solution, was to use a dynamic array. So we would explicitly allocate memory in this case. And so I did it right here in the array returning functions. This is number four. So I called it return dynamic array, dynamic string. And in this case, I am uh, allocating memory, dynamic memory, and then having a pointer point to that uh, uh, segment of memory. And then I am filling that segment of memory or array with a string. This string is in a malloc buff buffer. And then I'm returning a pointer to that segment of memory. So let's go back to main, which acts as our caller to this function. So in this case, I'm just going to activate this part of the code right now and we'll look at what exactly it does. So let me just activate it right here. Zero. 
And what I'm doing here is I have, uh, just as I had earlier on, a pointer to a character calling my function that we had just seen right now. It's going to give me back uh, the pointer to uh, the first element of that array that it had allocated dynamically in that in that function. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to print out that string and then and then finally make sure that you actually free that uh, uh, segment of memory that was allocated by that function. So like we said, this is one of the disadvantages of the solution is that we're getting into memory management issues right here. And one of the problems with the return dynamic function, uh, dynamic string function, that one right here. Well, I'll just take a look at it right here. So that one, uh, the problem is that it's it's allocating memory but not freeing it within that same function. So if the caller forgets to free it, then we will run into memory leaks issues. So going back to the caller right here, I'm just making sure that I'm freeing that uh, uh, buffer. And I had activated it right here. Let me compile it and run it. This string is in a malloc buffer, so that works as well. And finally, uh, number five, what we did now is that we had delegated the task of allocating and freeing memory to the caller and made the function as simple as possible. All it did was uh, fill the contents of that buffer and then return a pointer to it. So in this case, we see here that we're allocating memory of size size and then making buffer point to the start of it. And then uh, I do if buffer because sometimes malloc could fail and say that there's no memory left. So it, it was not able to allocate. So in this case, you, you check if buffer. And I should have done the same thing in that function return dynamic string. Then if I have that buffer, I'm going to call preallocate uh, fill preallocated buffer function uh, with a pointer to that buffer and the size of that buffer so that the function knows how big of a segment of memory that we have. It doesn't fill it with more than it can contain. And then we print out that buffer and finally free that buffer once we're done with it. So the allocation and the freeing is done by the caller as opposed to the previous case. And so let me just show you what's happening here. So in this case, all we're doing is simply that step right here. There is no returning. We could add a return value if we wanted, but in this case, there is no need for it, and we don't even allocate anymore. So we're making it as simple as possible. Just fill it with whatever the contents need to be, and then stop right there. So um, let's try to run this. We just have to activate it here. So I want to enable that code, the pre-allocated buffer part. I'm going to disable this one and so that works as well. This string is in a pre-allocated buffer. So finally, now that we've seen all these solutions, this one being the best of them, number five, uh, there's this last solution that I had suggested that might be used uh, depending on uh, your needs. So I'm just going to activate it right here, and so I'm just going to show you what it does. Number six. So we have this data structure, this uh, struct data, and uh, it is wrapping our buffer of a fixed size, size, which is 100. And then we have this function that returns this structure data, which wraps our array. So we're going to create one right here, and then we're going to access the buffer part of it, the array part of it, the array member, and then we're going to store whatever string we want in it, the contents of the array into it, and then uh, return that data, uh, that struct. So our caller will do the same thing. It'll create its own data, uh, struct D, and then assign the return value of return struct array to that struct data D, and then print uh, it's the value of the array inside that uh, data structure. So let's make sure that it's activated. We have it enabled that part of the code. Let's compile this and run it. This string is in a struct wrapped array. So now we have seen all six solutions in code and hopefully this gives you a better understanding how each one of the solutions works.